You know, it's funny. The release of the iPhone 4S was kind of like a Kubler-Ross experience. There was denial. No, I don't mind. It's not an iPhone 5. Anger. Wait, it's not an iPhone 5. Bargaining. Come on, Apple. Please, just one more thing. Depression. Whatever. I guess I'll get a droid. And then acceptance. Hey, the iPhone 4S rocks. Well, now we're through that neurosis, we can move on to what the iPhone 4S immediately makes us think of, what we want in the iPhone 5. I'm Brian Cooley here with the top five things in that category, leaving out the silly stuff like removable batteries, expandable storage, or flash support, the stuff that Apple's never going to do, and taking you right to the realm of reality. We're going to rank these by how likely it is we'll get each feature. Here we go. Number five, NFC, that's near field communications. This is that swipe to pay with your phone technology that all the banks and merchants and payment networks are cranking up in 2012. And which most consumers think is some kind of voodoo that will siphon their bank account, expose their ID or both. That notwithstanding, it's pretty likely Apple's gonna build NFC into the five because they have a big stake in the payment space due to iTunes. Chances here, about 40%. Number four is better battery life. The 4S pretty much just did a lateral on this front. So now Apple's really on the hook to make the 5 go longer on a charge. Especially since the MacBook Air goes all day on one, and it's a laptop, and the iPad goes all month on a charge. That makes the iPhone the one Apple product that doesn't really have a standout battery story to tell. New CPUs and GPUs we expect in the 5 are going to help out here, and the odds on this one, about 50-50. Number three is actually the number one thing CNET users like you tell us you want. That is, a screen bigger than a postage stamp. The long-standing 3.5-inch iPhone display is just plain dinky these days. You really feel it when watching a video, or if you use the phone as a navigation device. Yet we still rank bigger screen at maybe 50% likelihood because of the battery hit that a bigger display might mean, see number four, and the fact that the same users who want a bigger screen also say they don't want a bigger phone. That can be tough. Number two, 4G. If the iPhone 5 doesn't have 4G, I will officially whistle Apple's golden era dead. You see, 4G phones and networks are a little green right now, but by the time the iPhone 5 comes out, 4G phones are going to be it, and the 3Gs are going to be moving fast into the bargain category. Also, 4G bandwidth is going to do wonders for iCloud, which might dovetail nicely with an expansion of that service to finally work with video for the first time. Odds here? A solid 80%. Okay, before we hit number one, remember another reason for a lot of the anticipation that will be built up around the 5 are the reports that it was the last product Steve Jobs really focused on reportedly allocating the limited time he knew he had left to this product. It makes sense. It's far and away Apple's biggest thing in their entire lineup, and therefore it may be the last physical evidence we ever get of Jobs' vision. Okay, the number one thing we think we'll see and want to see in the new iPhone 5 is going to be a whole new design. Now, we don't know what the new look might be. Thinner, more sculpted, wider, longer, curvier, who knows? Those are all in play, as well as a bunch of crazy ones that I won't even bore you with. But we know this. In the handheld phone space, you have to change up your design once in a while to keep the coals burning under the hype machine. Also, consider patents we've seen that suggest backside multi-touch is coming. This isn't that thing you try and get away with in a strip club. It's a technology where you control the screen from behind the device. Or perhaps we'll get a completely button-free phone. Both of those ideas would create a more spacious screen experience, which answers your number one request. Whatever it is, a new design is 99% likely, with just 1% reserved in case Tim Cook drinks a whole lot more than we know. If you're intrigued by this short list and want to see the full one, including the stuff that everybody wants and that Apple will never give you, check out David Carnoy's full 15-item slideshow on things we want to see in the next iPhone. You can find a link to that and a lot more Top 5s like this at top5.cnet.com. I'm Brian Cooley. Thanks for watching.